Jaya Radha Madhava Nunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Nunja Thank you.
Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, text number 9. Everyone's either got a book or one of those little magical handheld devices that tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> and things you don't need to know, too. <laughs> Should we chant the verse responsibly? Yes. That's tradition. We follow tradition here. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Karya Miti Eva Yat Karma Niyatam Kriyate Arjuna Sangam Chakva Palam Chaiva Satyaga Sapiko Mataha Karyam Ityeva Yat Karma Niyatam Kriyate Arjuna Sangam Chakva Palam Chaiva Satyaga Satviko Mataha Merli Vadaka will call on you first. Karyami Deva Yat Karma Karyami Deva Yat Karma Yam Kriyate Arjuna Yam Kriyate Arjuna Sam Chakva Palam Chaiva Sam Chakva Palam Chaiva Satyaga Satviko Mata Satyaga Satviko Mata Karya mityeva yat karma Karya mityeva yat karma Niyatam kriyate arjuna Niyatam kriyate arjuna Sangam chakva palam chaiva Sangam chakva palam chaiva Satyaga sattvito mataha Satyaga sattvito mataha Kalya? Oh, maybe someone else can go. Pray You have to. Karya ya karma. Karya mitkeva ya karma. Niyatam kriyate juna. Niyatam kriyate juna. Sangha chakva palam chaiva. Sangha chakva palam chaiva. Satyaga ha sadviko vataha. Satyaga sadviko vataha. Ladies, please. One more. Karyam. It must be done. It must be done. Thus, eva, eva, indeed, indeed. Yat, yat, which, which, which. Karma, karma, work, work. Niyatam, niyatam, prescribed, kriyate, kriyate, is performed, is performed. Arjuna, Arjuna, oh Arjuna, oh, Arjuna. Sangam, Sangam, association, association. Va, giving up, 
Kalam. The results. Cha. Also. Eva. Certainly. Saha. That. Tiagaha. Renunciation. Satvikaha. In the mode of goodness. Mataha. In my opinion. Translation. Oh, Arjuna, when one performs his prescribed duty only because it ought to be done and renounces all material association and all attachment to the fruit, his renunciation is said to be in the mode of goodness. Purport. Prescribed duties must be performed with this mentality. One should act without attachment for the result. He should be disassociated from the modes of work. A man working in Krishna consciousness in a factory does not associate himself with the work of the factory nor with the workers of the factory. He simply works for Krishna. And when he gives up the result for Krishna, he's acting transcendentally. What's up? Oh. This hand signals. Uh, no, I was just smiling because um, a devotee let me know that there's another garland we'd like to offer you. Oh, okay. Dr. So, Ken, you have the honor. Okay, look out. This is one of our rituals in the Hare Krishna movement, garland making and offering. But, but done with devotion. With devotion, yes. With devotion. With devotion. <laughs> very fragrant and very colorful. And out of Baba smiling back there. You brought? Thank you very much. How many chapters are there in Bhagavad Gita? Who knows? Raise your hand. Don't say it. Who, who knows? Who knows? Okay. Who doesn't know? Okay. This is the last chapter in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18. And so chapter 18 is not exactly saying something new. It's explaining again with, with elaboration what's already been stated earlier. It's a summary. Summary review, chapter 18, wrap up. And Similar is chapter 2. Be kind of son an introductory position summarizing contents of the Gita summarizes Prabhupada's title of that chapter. So 18 is similar. So you learn chapter 2 and chapter 18 you're, you're done. Or at least you know the summary essence of things. And for those of you that haven't been attending the other classes in the previous weeks, the, the chapter begins with a question, and the question is on the topic of work, karma, and it's asked again uh, because it's important. <clears throat> the topic of karma or karma yoga connecting with Krishna because that's the yoga part in relation to what we do is really important that that's what, what we do is our work one verse of Bhagavad Gita that gives the definition of karma is that which develops a material body that's karma so here we are it's a flag using Prabhupada's term you know it, in the West, flags don't mean a whole bunch, but in Vedic culture, 
the 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 presence of a king was known by the insignia on the flag. I mean, United Nations they have flags, but so it's a flag flapping in the wind, saying karma, and this is mine. Karma. It's the fruit of my karma. And attachment to the fruits of our karma is the material program. And if you haven't noticed, you should, that it's not easy to let go of attachment to the fruits of our karma. It's, it's, we bring that tendency with us into the, at least we try, into the house of bhakti. But we're supposed to leave our shoes outside. We try to bring our shoes inside. And then it's called mish, mishra, karma, mishra bhakti. It's hard to get to the shuddha, unmixed stage of bhakti. So, so it's important. Knowledge, Arjuna is asking a question for a definition of something that's already said. It's, it's, um, in Baladev Vidyabhusan's commentary he says, Krishna inspired my heart to have this doubt so I could ask questions for further elaboration on what he's already said. So there's this word sannyas, and there's this word tyaga. So in the Hare Krishna movie, we know about sannyas, that's saffron cloth, and you know, you receive a danda and you dedicate the danda of a sannyasi. For those of you, anybody not know what a sannyas danda is? A stick, okay, a rod that when you take the vow of sannyas, you are given by your sannyas guru a danda. Danda means a rod or a stick. And in our Vaishnava tradition, it's three bamboo rods running together, indicating body, mind, and words. And here's a little secret. There's a fourth one, and it indicates the soul. So the temporary that's the body. The mind is really temporary and our words are also temporary. But they're, the temporary is to be dedicated exclusively unto Krishna. Everything for Krishna. And then the other one that doesn't go all the way, it goes up to where that little curved piece is for the Vaishnava Danda. That's the fourth rod and that's you. That's the not, not changing, the unchanging self. Dedicated to Krishna. So that's a word that's used in Bhagavad Gita in a few places. Sannyasa. It doesn't just mean those who have taken the vow of Sannyas Ashram. It means those who have a certain disposition towards work the temporary and their self. In other words, in other words, one can be married and be in the Bhagavad Gita sense of the term sannyas, that is dedicated by body, mind and words to Krishna's service. Everything is for Krishna's service. There's this ashram and that ashram and the other ashram, but everything is dedicated to Krishna's service. That's sannyas, in the Bhagavad Gita sense of the term. And then there's another word that's found earlier in the uh, 17th chapter, that's the one before 18, about, chak, about, about um, renunciation. So in the beginning of this chapter, Arjuna wants to know, you have these two terms, renunciation and sannyas. It sounds like they're this. Are they the same, or are they different? The example is given. Is it like trees and rocks, or is it like the Pandavas and the Kauravas? 
They're different terms that mean the same thing. Are they different terms that mean the same thing? Or is it how are they how are they the same and how are they different? Those of you that are not old folks know what a Venn diagram is. As older folks don't know. We have to find out from the younger folks. <coughs> a Venn diagram is here's two circles and when the two circles come to a partial overlap, there's th some things that are different, there's some things that are the same. And a Venn diagram is helping to analyze visually with arrows that go to the things that are similar and arrows that go to the things that are different. So there's some similarity and there's some difference between these two terms and that's Arjuna's question. Stating I have a doubt and you've stimulated the doubt so I'm sure you can give the answer and he asked what's what how are they similar how are they different so we're getting um, in that's that's the lead question and it's examining something previously discussed in Bhagavad Gita and it's examining it again because it's important it's really important I haven't done it in a while, but once I did it, you know, fruitive activities, put a, do a word search. How many times did Prabhupada use that term, fruitive activities? Answer, a lot. It's a big number. Why? Question, answer. It's important because <coughs> we're attached to fruitive activities. We're attached to the fruits of our activity. We're not attached to the suffering that comes from fruit activities. We're attached to trying to be the enjoyer of fruit of activities. And here's how it works. Would you like to know how it works? Yeah. yeah. Just go to a, a nearby shop and pick up your favorite set of false ego. <laughs> try, them, try them on for different, you know, which one you feel most comfortable with. And when you get a false ego, the soul gets a false ego, then you got to have a material intelligence and material, and, and material mind. And then you, do, you get those two things, false ego, material intelligence, material mind. And you get a, you know, the whole package, you get a, a gross body. And you think, that's me. That's you know, your favorite false ego brand. And sometimes they have little tears in the in the knee. <laughs> sometimes they're shiny. You know, different fashions of false ego. But false ego is a misconception of who I am. And once you've got that one, then you have the misconception of what's mine. I and mine. And mine is what comes from the body. That's what mine is. So my work come from me and it's mine and I'm meant to be the enjoyer of it because it's mine so get your hands off it's mine and my business is to enjoy as much as I can and make as much mine as I can and it's illusion it's not who we are and it's not what's mine and the enjoyment is also illusory it's temporary for sure, and insubstantial, for sure. There's no substance there. It's a shadow or reflection of who we really are and what real happiness is. And we take it to be real happiness and who we really are. You know, our, here in my Prabhu, <laughs> we're covered by that illusory conception. And once covered by the illusory conception, it's very difficult, triple, very, very, very difficult to get to go beyond it. Once you're stuck to the tar, how are you going to get unstuck to the tar? You use your other hand, it gets the other hand stuck to the tar too. <laughs> Whatever you try to do, it, you're stuck. And so there's a principle, early chapter 3, 
which is karma yoga chapter, that speak of sacrifice. And sacrifice in simple language is rendering something sacred. That's what sacrifice is. You offer the result of Krishna. Karma yoga. And then the tar attachment is gone. You're karma free. You know, that, there's difficulties because we think we're the body. And when you think you're the body, you think the fruits of the work of your body is yours and you're attached to it. Problema. So the philosophy is nice, but to live the philosophy is, you know, more of a challenge than just saying, saying you know, check the box. I'm not the body... The fruits belong to Krishna Hari <laughs> There's a there's a certain amount of purification required, and therefore, especially in this age of Kali, we engage in Sankirtan or chanting the holy name, chanting Japa. If you don't have a group of people at twenty six Second Avenue in your home, you can chant Japa, you can chant the holy name. And the holy name has a potency. Now here comes the commercial. Stronger than dirt. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. It it's, takes away that tendency to be the enjoyer of the fruits of your work. It's a very powerful cleansing agent. Cheto Darpana Marjanam, very powerful. There's some qualifiers that help us receive the benefit of the holy name and rather than list them, one of the th one of the uh, helpers is to have proper knowledge, and that's Bhagavad Gita. That's why we study Bhagavad Gita. It's to guide the bhakti that awakens that, that is the desire to use our senses in the service of the master of the senses instead of use our senses in maya or sense enjoyment independent of the proprietor of the senses forgetting who we are and forgetting Krishna and forgetting reality and being engaged in illusion that the chanting of the, the mantra, Hare Krishna mantra, awakens our original consciousness. So, Bhagavad Gita then helps to guide our activity so we know how to properly regard who we are and the, what's mine, that the fruits of our work. That's, so there we are, beginning of chapter 18. He, it's being discussed again inspired by Krishna to, to, to bring the topic up. And Krishna then proceeds to say, here's my opinion. Now when we say, da 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 is my opinion, we're not supposed to say stuff like that because, you know, so what's your opinion? And you're, you're a fallible being, but Krishna is not a fallible being. so. When he says, it's my opinion, it's, it's humility, but it's absolute truth. Krishna's opinion is truth. And he very generously offers, there's others that have other opinions. He doesn't mention them by name, but our acharyas do. This one says this, and that one says that. And, you know, go out there into the spiritual marketplace of ideas, and you can hear this and that abundantly. Just a little sharing. Um, one day I was in an airplane. <laughs> Every now and then I get one of those things. And uh, it was a, a flight from Los Angeles to Chicago and half the plane was 
students from the University of Alabama that had gone for the national championship football game and they lost. They weren't, they weren't a happy airplane. <laughs> But you know they all had that big A, red A on their their hat and their their sweatshirt and everything. So Alabama people. <coughs> and one of the f persons next to me, uh, another student, kind of was like looking at me like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm used to that kind of look. <laughs> But you know he was it was it was very nice and he said are you a monk and I said people usually ask are you a, a Buddhist monk and my answer is no I'm a Krishna monk <laughs> then I get to talk about Krishna so but he had a particular interest he he wanted to know do you do do you practice meditation. And I said, for 48 years I've been practicing meditation. And he said, do you know such and such meditation? He gave some name. And I said, could you say that again? You know, such and such. And he said it three times. And I never heard of it before. And he said, I, I found out about it from the internet. Gobbledygook meditation. Have you heard of gobbledygook? He doesn't the word to use, but it was some, some Sanskrit name, meditation. Are you familiar with Bhagavad Gita? No. no. What's Bhagavad Gita? I said, give me your address and I'll send you a Bhagavad Gita. He now has more than a Bhagavad Gita. He, he started a club at the university and somebody's helping him, you know, learn about mantra meditation. But he really, he's, he's a very serious young man. But he, you know, there's mis, mis exactly as the Bhagavatam said, misguided by gobbledygook. <laughs> he's sincere. But, you know, the, the sincere person needs proper knowledge. That's what Bhagavad Gita is there for. And how many different renderings are there of Bhagavad Gita? Too many. And it's gobbledygook. <laughs> it's not Bhagavad Gita. It's Professor so and so or Doctor so and so, Sanskrit is so and so, politician so and so says these are this. It's his ideas superimposed on the title. It's his ideas. It's gobbledygook ideas and calling it Bhagavad Gita. It's not Bhagavad Gita. So we need proper knowledge because knowledge will guide our activity, karma. So how, do, how are we to understand these terms? Renunciation, tyaga, and sannyas. Because they're, they're being encouraged. Dedication, so sannyas in short, sannyas is relinquishing those activities that are in pursuit of sense gratification. Not in pursuit of the senses, but in pursuit of sense gratification. And tiaga or renunciation, is you do prescribed activities, even the ones that are the other kind, you know, that's I want a good son or I want something something I want to go to the heavenly planets or something something <coughs> you renounce the fruits tiaga and then there's an added element that, that comes in verse 6 and then again here this evening's verse and that is um, without unwholesome association the, the, the Sanskrit word is sangha we did the word for word I'll go back if you have your book you can look but I'll look for you. Sangam is association and what Prabhupada writes in the translation and renounces all material association and in the purport he says a man working in, a, in Krishna consciousness in a factory does not associate himself with the work of the factory 
nor with the workers of the factory. Now he can't be like a phantom. He's got a body and they're in the factory and he's in the factory. Or we go to the office or go to the place where we work and we don't like become invisible or they become invisible. We're not inhuman and insensitive and you know a stone. But association in the sense of it's, it's in Rupa Goswami's teachings. Um, confidential association. Inquiring confidentially from a person who thinks they're their body. And, you know, what do you think I should do about such and such? We don't do that. We're, we're polite and cordial and we, we're, we're carrying the consciousness, we should be, carrying the consciousness of how can I remind this person of Krishna? You may not have the answer, but you're, that's your consciousness. Maybe it's prasadam, maybe it's a smile, maybe it's whatever it is. And the desire is, you're, you're their friend, you're acting as the instrument of Krishna, who is their best friend, to remind them of Krishna. In some way or another way. So that's giving association, we're careful about receiving association, unwholesome association. And um, so, when Krishna is describing tyaga, or renunciation, he says, please listen carefully, because it's not just one thing, it's in three divisions according to the modes of nature. So the previous two verses, this one is, this evening verse is the mode of goodness, that's the good one, that's what we should be striving for. And ignorance is things that are to be done, you give them up. Passion is you don't do them because they're inconvenient. And goodness is you do them because they ought to be done. Brush your teeth. Because you're supposed to brush your teeth. It's, it's oral hygiene. You brush your teeth. You don't not brush your teeth. Well, I'm in a rush this morning. I'm not going to brush my teeth. You brush your teeth. Because it ought to be done. Not just because you have bad breath if you don't. It's just, it's, it ought to be done. It's, it's, it's to be done. You don't, you take your bath. Because it's to be done. I mean, I was traveling once in China. I was shocked. I was in Beijing. And I met somebody that came from Mongolia, and he volunteered. It's so cold in Mongolia. I'm accustomed not taking a bath for six months, or four months, or whatever it was. And I, I was, I couldn't speak. <laughs> so cold. But now you're in Beijing, and it's not so cold. You take a bath this morning. <laughs> It's to be done. Find out a way to make the water warm and take your bath. Come on, we're in Mongolia. There must be a way to do it. Because it ought to be done. So th that's, that's Prabhupada's language. It ought to be done. It's similar to Kapila Dave's language in um, devotional service. It ought to be done because it leads to purification. I do so. In our lives, we do things we like to do, and we also do things we don't particularly like to do. And if we do the things we don't particularly like to do, it's good to do them because it'll purify my existence. Because it's, it's not transcendental yet, just because it'll purify. But if it because it'll purify my existence. I do it because it'll purify my existence. Whatever those things are that you like, and those because we're all different, some things we like. Some people don't like those things; they like other things. And but the th we do not just the things we like. We, we do the things we like, but we should do them for the purpose of purification. And ultimately, the transcendental purpose is to please Krishna. Because when we come before Krishna in a pure state, Krishna will smile. Mm -hmm. We come before Krishna not yet pure, 
you get one of those. <laughs> keep going. Very good, keep going. Just like, you know, a child. Very nice. Keep going. Become mature. It will encourage you when you're not yet mature and keep keep going and become mature. So, transcendence is Krishna is to be pleased. Goodness is, this will purify my existence or it ought to be done. Like it, don't like it. It ought to be done, I do it. Not just because, so, the I want something I do something because I want something and therefore say there's a government regulation. If I want something, I want a driver's license, there's some stuff I have to do to get a driver's license because it's the law. I can't just go drive a car without a driver's license. So we go through some inconvenience to follow some regulation to get what we want. That's something that a sannyasi is recommended not that you can't have a driver's license but you don't do those rituals that are purposefully for enjoyment you do those things because body mind and words and soul that's for the service of Krishna that's our Vaishnava sannyas supposing somebody's not a Vaishnava there are people that aren't and they're advised not to do those rituals that are kama, that are, you know, you do this one and you get that one. Om Jai Jagadisha Hare. So, not, not one of those. Sannyasis are not supposed to do that. Or those, then, so, Tyaga has these three elements. I'm almost done. Get ready for an abrupt ending. <coughs> there are three elements mentioned in this verse. <coughs> Let's go over them again. Perform prescribed duty because it ought to be done. So I guess that's two right there. It's the, the duty, you have to know what your duty is, and you have to do it with the motivation of detachment. It ought to be done. I'm doing it because it ought to be done. Renounces all material association. I'm careful about who I intimately keep the company of. And all attachment to fruits. Now, a, a detail. Here's a detail. Um, I spent some time uh, looking up our previous Acharya's commentary and they translate this word Sangam differently. Here's how they translate it. It is not wrong, it's just their perspective, and it's, it's legitimate. It's um, the doership mentality. Association. Association with our dear friend, false ego, where I think I'm the doer. Karta aham, in, earlier in the language of Bhagavad Gita, karta is you do. Aham, I'm the doer. So Sangam, they've translated similarly. Thinking yourself the doer of your prescribed duties. It's recommended, their rendering is, to give up that doership mentality and when you do your duty, there's a result. You are, you are detached from the result. But you do your duty. You act karma-free. Prescribe duty with the motivation that it ought to be done without the doership mentality and then here comes the fruit and the fruit goes to Krishna. That's Krishna's opinion, mataha. We can add, and we're careful with the intimate association that we keep in our day-to-day -day lives. We're friendly to all, and we're in intimately, closely associating with devotees who are on the track to Krishna and wishing 
whatever their stage is, that's their intention in their life. They may be whatever their position is, but th those are persons who we, they may be higher, lower, or peers. But we, we happily accept the association of such persons. And we're cautious about those that are intimate association of those that don't have that intention in their life. We're cautious. We're not look at them like they've they got a disease or something, but we're just cautious about close association with those persons. When we're carrying the, the wish to be a, an instrument to remind them of Krishna. I'll share this one more thing. <coughs> it's not too often, but it's not terribly uh, unusual when I'm traveling and people ask, "What? Do you mind if I ask what's that stuff on your forehead?" Mm -hmm. You know that, like, it, the last time it happened, it was uh, an, an agent at a check-in counter at an airport. And, you know, she looked at my ID and looked at me and d did her thing on the computer and said, do you mind if I ask, what's that mark on your forehead? And I was like, wow, I get to talk about Krishna. <laughs> I said, it means, in case you're asked, it's a nice thing. It means the body is a temple of God. She said, oh, that's nice. That's why there was a pause, so I kept going. So just like a church at the top, it has a cross. It has a steeple. At the very top, there's a cross. And over there is a Star of David. That's a synagogue. And over there is another mark. And that's a... So this means we're marking the body as a temple of God. It means within, just like the Bible says, the kingdom of God within you. So we're acknowledging. We're trying to remind ourselves that God is within. And then she stopped on her computer and looked up and, you know, God is within. He's in my heart, he's in your heart, and this is a reminder. And therefore, so she, because she paused, I went the next one. Um, <laughs> that means whatever goes in and whatever comes out, you treat it like a place of worship. You don't put stuff in the church that doesn't belong there. And you're very careful what you say. When you, when you can walk out of the church, you can talk whatever stuff, but when you're in the church, you're really careful, respectful, because God is in the church, right? So we, we try to remind ourselves and remind others. She said, that's very nice. Here's your boarding pass. <laughs> if we have the opportunity to remind others of Krishna, that's good. And if we're just carrying the consciousness that we wish to remind others of Krishna, that's good too. That ought to be done. And we live our lives in that way, even if they don't know that we're devotees. Krishna knows that we're trying to be devotees, and so we're trying to remind people by our character and what we say and what we do, the body-minded words. That resonates with what's pleasing to Krishna or pursuing that which is pleasing to Krishna. That's carrying bhakti in our hearts and it, ha it has an impact on the world around us. Besides, it protects us. It has a positive influence on the world around us. And Krishna will give you the opportunity to remind others of him in additional ways. That's our life. We may, you know, we may be down here, we may be a little bit up here, we may be way up there, wherever we are, that's our life. And it's a happy life. The unhappiness in life is due to the attachment, that's the ignorance thing. The root cause of suffering is ignorance. So it's not just run around, gather up a bunch of knowledge and put it in your information basket. Now you're not going to have to suffer. It doesn't work like that. It's something that it, it has to be, it's a cultivation of how you live your life in harmony with the message of Bhagavad Gita. Specific to this chapter is work. We all work. 
And how do we regard that work? What's our attitude? What's the consciousness and the way that we go about our living our lives, the work that we do? So it's, it's, it's an important chapter, important topic, spoken again. Okay, abrupt ending. Mm-hmm. It's nice to be back with you all. I was going to say that at the beginning, but I knew there'd be people kind of coming a little bit later. I didn't see Anubhava, I knew he was coming. So, good to see you all again. And let's see if there's some discussion. Yeah. Um, I have a question. I'd like to give three examples to illustrate it. My question is... Can you hear him in the back? I have a question, and I'd like to give three examples to illustrate my question. The question is, the instruction in this verse to act without... to do our prescribed duties without attachment to the result, does that hold for when we're engaged in devotional service directly? Three examples. I'm cooking for Krishna. I'm about to put it, the recipe calls for a little cayenne pepper. Whoops, the lid slipped. A whole bunch of cayenne pepper went in. Okay, I'm doing my duty. I'm not attached out to the result. S- next example. I'm, I have to do my prescribed duty. It means follow the law. I'm walking in the park. There's a beautiful flower that I could pick and offer to Krishna. Only I'm not supposed to pick it. Or the sign says, no solicitation. But I have all these books to distribute for Krishna. So at what point do we disregard this instruction, or does this instruction hold for when we're directly engaged in devotional service? This question could result in a whole lot of <laughs> other questions that will take up the rest of the evening, <laughs> which is lovely is the application. Uh, Yes, it does apply to our devotional service, and for devotional service, the principle of devotional service is Krishna is to be pleased. And if Krishna be pleased with a whole load of cayenne pepper in the the subject, (laughs) then go for it. But, so, the attachment is not to the result, the attachment is to pleasing Krishna. That's, that's a, a different kind of attachment which is to be encouraged. Attachment to pleasing Krishna. And the result, the not attachment to the results, has to do with fruitive activities and we should not be attached to the results of fruitive activities. So, now the you know, picking of the flower in the the park. Well, devotees used to do that. <laughs> thinking, it's for Krishna. Krishna is the one that grows the flowers, not these peop- not these park people. And, you know, uh, they got in trouble. <laughs> and people's minds were disturbed. What's wrong with you people? You're disrespectful of others' property. And so, the, the, when Prabhupada came to know that they were doing that, he told them to not do that because we abide by the law and we abide by someone's maybe it's not the park maybe it's somebody's home that they stole from people's homes too now if you're in India I've I, some of you are from India early in the morning it's really common it's not like stealing from people's homes but there's some trees by the side of the road and they make really fragrant flowers and people go really early in the morning to do their worship in their home and they gather flowers from here and there and it's not just one person it's like you know half a dozen or more going here and there early in the morning for their puja not you know for the marketplace but you know for their worship and you know people are not, <coughs> are not offended oh that's my tree you're taking but they don't go inside the gate and to the tree that's inside the gate take the flowers from the tree that's inside the gate. That's not, that's not to be done. So there's, there's, a, there's a, back to your question, there's a little bit of common sense involved in, in, in responding to this question. 
But ultimately, it's Krishna is to be pleased. And if we're not clear, is Krishna going to be pleased by this or not? Then we then we don't. When in doubt, don't. Because we want Krishna to be pleased. We can inquire. Is it okay to go steal flowers from the park for offering to our deity? Go ask the park people, they'll give you the answer. <laughs> Not okay, so you don't do. So that's just back to the essence. The essence, this has to do with activity, prescribed activities and the prescribed duty that has a result and one is not to be attached to the result of the prescribed duty. And does it apply to devotional service? Yes, when the result has to do with, you know, how does it look? Let's say, you know, the, the devotees that were artists. Hey, I'm just an artist, doesn't matter what it looks like. But it's, it's, it's to attract the hearts and the minds of others to Krishna, so it, then that's pleasing to Krishna. The consciousness is pleasing to Krishna, so we do it nicely as we can, and then ability comes more and more and more. So that's my answer to that question. Any anything more on this or something else? Here we go. Whoops! Whoops! On this side. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I was just going to ask um, if you could explain what's the difference between giving association versus receiving in wholesome association? Okay, the difference between giving association and receiving. Receiving association. Right, unwholesome. Okay. I'm trying to think of Prabhupada speaking on this topic and it, uh, my, my thought is it's, it's more of an explanation that amongst devotees we discuss. Merle, can you think of a direct example? So giving association is, as I was indicating, being a, an instrument, nimitta is a Sanskrit word for you you act as the instrument of Krishna so Krishna is everyone's dear most friend he says in chapter 5 Bhagavad Gita Sura Dham Sarva Dehina and we're he is everyone's dear most friend we don't have that capacity but we we can be an instrument of Krishna's capacity to some degree and so acting as a well-wishing friend, as an instrument of Krishna, I wish to remind this person of Krishna. Speaking in real simple, general terms. And that's giving association. So I can be in the workplace, or I can be in the subway, or I can be, you know, in the marketplace, or I can be, you know, in an airplane. Giving association. That is, wishing to be an instrument to remind others of Krishna in a favorably, pleasing way, not remind them in a what's wrong with these people way. Where it's, it's um, they thinking favorably towards Krishna, and I'm, I can be an instrument of that. Or remind them of who they are when they have forgotten, so their suffering can diminish. Let me be an instrument of that. That's giving association. And then taking association is the light goes out, that one goes out, and I'm, you know, moving about in those venues mentioned, thinking, you know, some other thought, but whatever the other thoughts might be. Absent those thoughts, then I'm receiving that association. And if the association is in this mode, or that mode, or the other mode, it's rubbing off on me because that's how we develop qualities, is the association we keep. So we give association, and to, get, to give association we have to 
have received it. We have to receive the association of those who are on this path of reminding others, including ourselves, of Krishna. So we come together like this. And we do other things besides this that help us um, receive that consciousness so we can give that consciousness. Yeah. I, I can just speak loud, it's fine. Okay, speak, speak loud. Because Go I ahead. feel like it's muffled in my voice. Okay, speak loud. Um, so say you're like at work or whatever and you know, you're know you engaging with people and you guys are talking, people are speculating, we're talking about like big questions and you start like giving in, you give, you give knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita or whatever it is that I, I've acquired from studying the Vedas. Um, that's not that's not receiving um, unwholesome because although you guys are go although people are speculating you you're still giving them Krishna did you hear her question okay good can't tell that miss test in the back back there so it depends mm -hmm. and you know again discrimination is uh, very important when you might and when you might not do such things because it can just um, add to a swirl of speculation by your injecting transcendental knowledge in, with people that are prone to speculation they just like they get ramped up and do more speculation and then they start saying negative things about what you said and then you have to defend what you said because it's Krishna's words and then it gets to, into this disputation thing. Mm -hmm. So, a little discrimination. And, you know, that discrimination means you know your audience to some degree and you kind of, you know, titrate messages in. <coughs> that takes experience, you know, like how you inject something that's just reasonable common sense and some people just like to argue and even common sense thing they just you say anything and they want to argue with it so it depends on the person and the circumstance and then you get caught up in you know a controversy mode now some people are really good at that I know some people are really good at it but I can't imagine you're really good at it no no uh, so you use your discrimination. Yeah. I I do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then and then what you say it's uh, you know according to the time place circumstance. And you know don't speak above your realization. You just because when they come back with something negative, you're not shaken. You're just hey. I just trying to give association here. Mm -hmm. Krishna's message. So be 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 mindful. Yeah. Hare Krishna. You gotta speak loud though. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh. Um, I'm, I'm blessed. I feel like at my workplace, I'm able to talk about Krishna very freely, as you stated, to the extent that I understand. Um, a lady left my job a couple of days ago, and the one thing she asked, the one thing she thanked me for was that be you know, she learned about Krishna through our conversations. But how do I help myself not become attached to that enjoyment or that fulfillment? Nimitta. Nimitta means you're an instrument. Who's the enjoyer? Krishna. Krishna. And the happiness of being an instrument for Krishna's enjoyment is a greater happiness than the false ego one that says, aha. What do you think? No, it's a cultivation. Again, your question was how to avoid and the, the, the answer is bhakti. That's how you avoid it. Well, you know, bhakti is rare. But that's how you avoid it. Don't stick your head in the sand. You awaken bhakti. Don't close your eyes and become an impersonalist. Awaken bhakti. Be Krishna's instrument. 
that's you know that's life's challenge. It, it you know it's the battles against ourselves. So it's it's okay to get enjoyment for that or to well feel the the those. I'll say it again the enjoyment is ideal enjoyment is Christmas enjoyment. We're, we're, but we're not there yet. We're not in the Christian's enjoyment bracket. We're in the, you know, my enjoyment bracket. So, recognize I can accept this happiness, Krishna is kind, and I want this higher happiness. I want the bhakti happiness. Not the doership mentality happiness. Karta aham. I did it. Yay! And then when it doesn't happen, boom. Oh. They're both illusion. It's illusory happiness. So is it okay to have illusory happiness? Well, <coughs> there, there's some element of Krishna is pleased, for sure. And you've been in his instrument, for sure. You're being thanked for it, for sure. So be happy that you had the opportunity to do that. Krishna is kind. He gave you the opportunity. And somehow, not you, but some somehow some awakening of that consciousness was transmitted to another person. Krishna's mercy. See it that way. Then it goes. It is trans. It, it it doesn't stick. It goes right through you to Krishna. Practice it. Cultivate it like that. Yes. May I make a comment on this discussion about association? Sure. Um. Uh, several times, Srila Prabhupada expressed the desire that the devotees could work with devotees rather than with a, but our society hasn't come to that point where everybody could just work with devotees. So we used to say to devotees that when you work with non, for non-devotees, you bring back more than a paycheck. That is, you have to be very careful about that association. I'll give a personal example. I'm working a little bit for a friend. And he, he sells used cars, and part of the work I have to do is go deal with auto mechanics. Now, I don't want to offend the class of auto mechanics, but they speak in the foulest languages. <laughs> so even they're telling me something about a carburetor or something. It's every other word is a word I don't want to listen to. I don't want, but ha I'm, I'm, so I have to realize that I have to protect my consciousness. <coughs> That I can't just tell them, shut up, because it won't work like that. It, sometimes, after some time, they recognize that they shouldn't, they try not to use those words around me, somehow or other. But most of them, it's very, so you have, even in the, in the example given where they're talking speculation, because we're conditioned, the, the uh, an impetus to speculate is also within us, and we have to be very careful that that doesn't stimulate our own speculation. My point being that, when you're dealing with non-devotees, you have to be aware and careful not to let that association affect you. It's almost like after I deal with all those mechanics, I just want to jump in the Ganges and pure my, <laughs> my myself. Or at least I, on my way home, I chant Hare Krishna or listen to something to try to get my consciousness back. Mm. <laughs> Anyone out there with some... Yes? That's about fear of losing your job. Fear of losing your job. Yeah, so, so uh, sometimes it goes well. Uh, I mean, I talking about me, I had a very bad experience of not having a job, losing a job, looking at the job. And I feel like whatever arrangement I have right now is totally Krishna's arrangement because it's so, like, specifically for me, who I am and... Uh, everything that I, I, I would need. It's definitely Krishna's arrangement. And I should be peaceful whatever he took care of me. And he takes care of me. That's that's my vision. But in the same time, when, when something comes up where I feel not qualified or something, there is a fear of, of losing a job. And even though I, I tell myself, okay, whatever Krishna wants, but the fear <laughs> is there because the thought that if I lose the job, what I'm going to do, and all this, whatever happened already before. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's like, 
And th then there is a time when, when I <coughs> finally take control of myself and I'm saying everything up to Krishna, whatever Krishna wants, he always wants only the best for me. Whatever happens, it kind of come, comes down and he does take care of me. Even the situation happens that fearful. And then after that, it's always nothing or well, something like that. But, but it happens. It happens. And yeah. how to deal with this? Uh, because living in this world, trying to survive, let's say, that survival thing. <laughs> Taim hi esha guna mai, mama maya duratiya, mami vaye prapadyante, maya me tam tarantite. What do you think? You know the verse? I know it, I forgot, the, I forgot the, what that means. <laughs> well, it, it, what it means <laughs> is <coughs> this place is a place of struggle. And one of the struggles is one of the, is what you mentioned, and there's other ones, not just you, but you know, the place. And struggle this way, struggle that way, or combination of struggles, it's a place of struggle. And some are more fearful than others, but it's a place of struggle. What to do is your question. How do I overcome that particular struggle, the fear of losing a job struggle? Um, Mami vie prapadyante. Prapadyante means surrender. Mam is unto Krishna. Eva is certainly. Those persons should surrender to Krishna. Maya metam, and Krishna can take you beyond to the other side of the struggle. You know, then, then comes the yeah, but. Yeah, but. <laughs> 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 when I'm feeling that fear, I, I forget. And, and as you said, you know, then after some time I get a hold of myself and say, come on, self, take shelter of Krishna. He's always... So, that's the solution. Now, the, 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 the dealing with the fear, we don't like that space. That's one of the struggles. And there's others, as mentioned. We need association of persons that are going to remind us. We need such people in our lives, at least one, if not multiple, at least one, a person who we can reach out to and they're there. And they know us, they accept us, they know we're struggling, this is, this is a struggle, and that's okay. Now let me remind you of well, how to get on the other side of that struggle. Yeah, but, so then, okay, yeah, but, then, it's the mind. It's not, the, it's not intelligence, it's the mind. You know, intelligence says, you know what? When you get in that fearful space, your productivity goes down. You're more vulnerable to lose your job if you start getting into the space of being fearful of losing your job. A self-fulfilling prophecy, as they say because I'm fearful, and I'm less productive, I'm less focused, I'm less attentive, I'm less present. I'm more in the future and in the past than the present. So I need, I need good association. I need good sadhana. I need spiritual strength. Balaram! <laughs> and he's there in our mantra. Just bring your consciousness to source of spiritual strength and good association once again. Therefore, all the devotees, whatever are the, the struggles that we have, keep good association. This is one and other avenues of good association. And Kali Krishna's kirtan too, that's like... <laughs> That's a hint we're getting ready for having kirtan wrap up. Any one last question, anybody? Yes. Maharaj, can you explain a little bit about the Acharya's explanation on Sangam? You mentioned that. Uh, okay. His question was Prabhupada uses the Sangha, you know, 
sadhu sangha. Sangha means association. It's that's the meaning. And our two acharyas, Baladev and Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, both translate it as doership. So that's a kind of association. It's not specifically association with others who are unwholesome. It's association with our dear friend, false ego. And abandoning false ego is taking the association of who we really are, taking the association of the, the reality that Krishna is presenting. We're not the doer. Not the false association kind. Okay.